everyone and welcome back to RC Newbies Track. So we're back this week with the last part in the build series, part six, and this is fitting all the chassis parts. Uh, we'll be dealing with the ESC, the radio equipment, motor, the servo. We'll be getting all that installed into the car. Uh, we'll also be doing all the soldering. Um, so yeah, lots to get through. So let's get straight on with it. So before we get back to the instruction manual, what I want to do is just start the battery off charging. Um, I'm not going to go too much through the features of the charger. I'm only going to really just go through what I need it for, which is just to do a balance charge. So what I'll do is I'll get all this connected up. We'll have a look how it's connected. Um, and then we'll have a look at the charging feature. Since the unboxing, one thing I have been out and brought is one of these, and this is a balance extension cable. So one end plugs into the charger and the other end plugs into the balance charge cable. And it just gives you a bit more distance between the charger and the LiPo bag when it's charging. So first off, I've just fitted the balance and charge cable to the battery. So it does say in the manual to connect the leads to the charger first. So I've connected the charge cable and the balance extension cable. Um, and now it's just a matter of connecting the battery we'll get that put in a lipo bag and then we'll turn it on so this is the screen you see when you first turn it on um it's like set lipo charge 0.1 amps 3.7 volt and saying it's a 1s but what we need to do is change this to a lipo balance charge up the ampage a bit and change it to a 2s so you can do that by going through the different charge options and you do that by using these two buttons here. This one goes forward through the menus and this one goes backwards through the menus. So click enter to enter the LiPo balance mode and it's set at five amps at the minute. Uh, my battery is a 5,000 milliamp battery. Um, so you could charge that at five amps and the good way to work it out is if uh, you've got a 1000 milliamp battery, you would charge at one amp. If you've got a 3000 milliamp battery, you would charge at three amps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this down as I've read that if you charge it a little bit slower, uh, it helps with not only safety, um, but it also helps balance the cells more equally. So I'm gonna go and change that down to four. And you change that by using the down button. Or if you go too far, you can go back up this way by using this button. Uh, click on enter. And as you can see at the minute, it's saying it's 22 volt 6S. So we need to change that to a 2S. And again, using these buttons, we're just gonna go down to a 2S. So, and as you can see, it's flashing at 7.4 volt. So that's fine. So click enter to save those settings. And then to start the charge, you hold the start or enter button down for three seconds. So it's doing its battery check. It's saying it's 2S, confirm it. And there we go, we're charging. So no fires yet. So uh, what I'll do now is just put this to one side, keep an eye on it. And I'm also gonna keep an eye on the timer uh, to see how long it takes. So let's put this to one side and get back on with the build. Okay, so we're on to page 21 now, and this is the chassis parts installation. So let's have a look inside the bag first. So as always, you get plastic and metal parts in one bag. Uh, you get two servo mounts. You also get the antenna post. Uh, you get two servo horns. Uh, one's for Samwa, which is the one I'm going to use. And you also get another one for Futaba. And to note the difference between the two, there's a SA and an F printed on the back. SA for Samwa, F for Futaba. So you also get two ball sockets, and that's going to be for the steering rod that attaches to the servo to the steering assembly on the chassis. And you also get three bits of servo tape. 
Right, step one. So step one is building up the servo horn and fitting that to the servo. Um, it needs to be at an angle uh, 90 degrees as shown in the instruction manual. Um, but what you need to do first is reset the servo um, and the only way to do that is to get power to it. Um, so what I'm going to do is sort of break away from the manual at this point. Um, I'm going to build up the servo horn but I'm not going to actually fit it. But I am going to fit the servo to the chassis, carry on with the build. Then when I get power to the car, reset the servo and then attach the horn. So that is the servo horn built. And now it's just going to be a matter of attaching it to the servo when we reset it. And that little small black screw is the screw you get with the servo. So that's not actually included in the build kit, but you get one of those depending on which servo you buy. Step two is fitting the servo to the chassis using the servo mounts. So I'll go ahead and fit those now. So that's both mounts fitted to the chassis. Now it's just a matter of just fitting the servo to the mounts. Fitting the servo to the servo mounts is just done by using two screws and two plastic washers. So I'll just go ahead and fit this now and we'll come back and have a look when it's in. So there we go, that's the servo in. Uh, one thing I would keep in mind when you're doing it is when it comes to screwing down the servo into the mounts, it's just push down a bit on the servo because uh, as you can see, there isn't much clearance there for the steering to go above the servo. So definitely something to keep in mind. So step three is assembling the steering turnbuckle. Um, as with the other turnbuckles, they all have to be uh, set lengths. So this one's 9.5 millimeters. So I've got my micrometer back out to help me with this. Um, so the same as uh, the others really, is uh, they recommend you uh, grease up the turnbuckle, screw both ends on fully, and then adjust back until they're about 9.5 millimeters in length. So I'll go ahead and do that and we'll have a look when it's all finished. So that's the steering turnbuckle made up. Uh, it does say in the manual when it's fitted there might need to be some fine tuning made. But let's go on to step four. So step four would be attaching the steering turnbuckle to the servo horn and to the steering assembly. But as we're waiting to get power to the servo to reset it, I'll come back and do this at the end. So the charger just started beeping at me to let me know the battery is fully charged. And as you can see, it's just taken just over 50 minutes to fully charge. So not too bad. Uh, it does say in the manual when it comes to disconnect everything to do it in reverse of the way you set it up. So I'll be disconnecting the power supply first then disconnecting the battery from the charge leads and then finally disconnecting the leads from the charger itself. So I'll just go ahead and do all that. There we go, everything disconnected. Now I'm just gonna keep the actual battery stored inside the LiPo bag until I come to use it. So the next step is to fit the motor. Um, what I'm gonna do here is step away from the manual again. Uh, it does tell you to add the pinion and mesh the gears, but I'm gonna leave the pinion off at the minute. Um, I think I'm gonna to need to move the motor around when I install the radio gear uh, ESC. Um, also when I do a bit of soldering, it might be handy to be able to move the motor around without having to worry about affecting the gear meshing. So I'll come back and I'll fit the pinion at the end. So that's the motor in, and what you can See, so I'm able to just sort of move it backwards and forwards, just if I need to move it to do certain parts of the build. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the motor as far forward as it will go and secure it there. And the reason I'm doing that is if you keep it to the back, as far back as it will go, and uh, to space your ESC, for example, up against it, if you did have to move it forward, it would be pushing against your ESC. So the, what the best thing is, uh, 
I've sort of found out to do is push it as far forward and that gives you a good idea of what space you've got to work in and if anything when you move the motor back you'll have a little bit more room there. So next up is fitting all the radio gear and including that is the ESC and I'm also going to attach the sensor cable to the motor because that's just going to sort of play in with how everything fits into the chassis. So I'm going to have a little play around and see what works best uh, and then we'll come back and have a look at that. So that's the receiver in. I haven't connected anything, just uh, use the survey tape just to hold it down. So I've connected the sensor cable and just ran that down the side of the motor and then just used a bit of electrical tape just to hold it to the chassis just to keep it there while I work on the ESC. And sort of bringing me on to that. What I want to do is uh, do a bit of soldering to the ESC before I install it into the car. So let's have a look at the soldering part of the build. So this is what I've got. Uh, I have got a little bit of experience with soldering. Um, I haven't used a soldering iron since about 2006, so quite a while. Um, might be a little bit rusty, but I sort of remember the basics. Uh, so I'll tell you what I've got. Uh, the soldering iron is just a cheap one off eBay. Uh, it was part of the kit. It cost about £12. Uh, I'd probably recommend getting a, a better quality soldering iron, but uh, this one will do for just the build. Uh, next to that in the blue tub, i uh, got some soldering paste or flux. Uh, this really helps with getting the solder to flow. Um, and I went out and brought some uh, extra solder um, as it was just a cheap kit. I thought the solder would be pretty poor quality, so I thought I'd go out and just spend a little bit more on uh, some better quality solder. Uh, the stuff I've got is a 63-37 split between tin and lead. Um, and I've got two different sizes, 0.5mm and the uh, slightly thicker stuff is one millimeter and i just got that really for the um motor tabs just something a bit more heavy duty for those at the top I've got two small pieces of heat shrink and two four millimeter bullet connectors and that's what we've been concentrating on first and the plan is to attach those to the esc and then just plug the esc straight into the battery um, that's what I'm going to do for the build anyway. I'm not too sure if that's the best way to go or maybe use a connector. Um, please let me know in the comments. Um, and then on the left is the tools. So I've got some wire cutters and strippers, a pair of tweezers and a pair of pliers. Uh, down the bottom we've got the ESC itself and uh, then a soldering jig. And we'll talk a bit more about the jig. Uh, it's not the best. So what I've found out since buying this is um, it's pretty useless for doing bullet connectors apparently. Um, the reason being because it's made out of aluminium uh, when you go to heat up the the bullet connector uh, it works as a massive heat sink and draws all the heat away from the bullet connector. Um, so what I'm going to try and do to sort of get around that is uh, I'm going to try and pull the bullet connector out a little bit. Um, I mean by that is just sort of pull it out so it's not making as much contact with the jig. Um, the bottom of the pin isn't touching the base of the jig. And there does seem to be a bit of movement there. Uh, sort of flip it over. It does seem to be pretty secure in there. So... I'm going to have a go at doing that. So the original plan was just to solder the bullet connectors onto the end of these cables, uh, just to save a bit of time really. And it looks like they're tinned and it could be done. Uh, but looking at this red plastic bit here, I thought this would slide off the cable or slide down. But it looks like it's stuck on there and I won't be able to slide the heat shrink over that. So I am going to have to sort of cut them down a little bit. Um, I know you are supposed to cut everything down as uh, short as you can uh, but what I'm going to do is just leave everything a bit longer 
uh, just in case I make a mistake and uh, I don't want to get caught out if um, I cut something too short and uh, so that's the first part of the uh, mission is to get these cut down um, and stripped so there we go that's uh, both of them cut and stripped and I gave them both a twist just keep putting the threads together uh, I did try and keep them the same sort of length as the end I cut off um, and looking at a bullet connector they are going to sort of fit in quite nicely I think so go ahead and get these set up to be tinned so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do each lead separately um, we'll start off with this one this is the positive cable um, and I've slid on the heat shrink so we just slide that down out of the way so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one on camera and then I'll do the other one off camera just to save a bit of time. So what I've done is I've just dipped in the end just into the uh, solder paste or the flux just to give it a bit of a coating. Um, and now the next part is to secure the wire for the soldering. Okay that's the cable secure. So now what we're going to do is just try and add a bit of solder to the soldering iron and then transfer that onto the cable and the flux should take it. So you get the soldering iron out. Okay, put a bit onto the bottom of the iron and we'll just place this on the bottom. So just let that heat up. There we go, give the iron a wipe, so this is what it's come out like at the end after it's just tinning, so not too bad for a first attempt. Um, right so uh, now let's uh, tin the bullet connector. Right so hopefully this uh, jig idea will work, hopefully we'll be able to get some uh, heat into this bullet connector and then just feed a little bit of solder in. So we'll go ahead and have a go at that. So I've got a different uh, solder tip on now. This one's just uh, gonna help me get into the bullet connector a little bit more. So I'm just gonna hold it on and get some heat into it. Then see if I can feed a little bit of solder in. The important bit is at the bottom of the cup so that seems to be okay so I think we're going to leave it at that we'll uh, have a quick look and see how it's turned out so there we go uh, it's got a fair bit of solder in the cup at the bottom of the connector so I think we're going to leave that there um, and now let's try and connect the two ends together so what I've just done is just added some flux to both ends and now I'm just going to apply a bit of heat and get them uh, together, soldered together. So what I've just done is just applied a, a bit of flux to both ends and now we just uh, apply a bit of heat, get the solder to flow and join the two together hopefully. Started to flow now. Okay, so she's going to add a tiny little bit of solder. There we go. 
So we'll just let that cool down for a second and then we'll come back and have a look how that's turned out. So not too bad uh, for a first attempt. I'm sure it would do the job. Um, so right, all that's left now is just to uh, slide the heat shrink over the connector and the joint and shrink that down. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll have a look at the finished product. So there we go, there's the finished article. So yeah, not turned out too bad, quite happy with that. So what I'll go ahead and do now is just do the other one, but I'll do that off camera just to save a bit of time. And then we'll come back and have a look at the pair. So there we go, that's both of them done. So I'm uh, fairly reasonably happy with how they've both turned out. So all we're going to do now is go back to the car, get the ESC put in, and then we can uh, cut down the motor wires and solder those. What I should do before I put the ESC in is just alter the belt tension. Um, it is a bit difficult to get to once all the radio gear's in. Um, that's probably why they put the top deck belt tensioner on, I imagine. So what I've done is I've altered it so there's about a centimetre in play in the belt. Um, I had it in my mind that it was around about two millimetres worth of play, um, but it's about a centimetre. So I've gone ahead and done that. So it's um, now just a matter of getting the ESC in. So I'll get that in and then uh, we'll have a look after. So that's the ESC in. I haven't connected anything up yet. Uh, the only thing I have done is move the motor uh, to the back of the motor mount and secured it there. Um, and that is just to give me a bit more room when I'm doing the soldering. Uh, if the motor was at the front of the motor mount when you soldered a wire, if you were to do it really, really short, when it came to moving the motor back, it would be pulling on this cable. So if you have it at the back like I have, solder it, when you move it forward, it's going to give you a bit of play in the cable so it won't be pulling on it and do any damage. Right, so let's go ahead and start soldering the motor cables. So you can see the motor is labelled up A, B and C. And that goes for the three motor cables as well, A, B and C. And it's just a matter of matching up each one. What I'm going to do is uh, do the same as what I did for the uh, positive and negative power cables. And that is I'll just do one on camera. Um, and then go back and do the other two off camera, just save a bit of time. So I've put the fan on the ESC uh, and cut the wire and stripped it. Um, and this is wire A, so we're going to go to A on the motor. Um, and I could have gone shorter, but I gave myself a little bit more length there just in case I make a mistake or I want to change anything at a later date. So the next part is to tin the end. So what I've done is just put a cloth over the ESC and motor just to help protect it a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is just add some solder to the wire and I might have to sort of move the wire into different directions to, to be able to get the best place to put the solder. So we'll go ahead and just uh, try a little bit on this side. So there we go, that's how it's come out. Uh, not too bad. So the next stage is to um, tin the motor tab. So we'll go ahead and do that. Right, so what I've done is just put a bit of flux on the tab. And then what I'll do is I'll apply a bit of heat and then we'll try and uh, apply the solder.
So a bit of flux on the cable and a bit of flux on the motor tab. And we'll just solder the two together. Remove the heat. So now we're just going to apply some more solder. There we go. So we we'll have a look at that and come back. That hasn't come out too bad. I think the flux has left a bit of residue behind, but um, I think that's that's fine. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead now and do uh, B and C um, off camera, and then we'll come back and have a look at the, uh, the finished motor. So that's all three done now. Uh, made sure there was a good amount of solder on each one. And I've had a good time to cool down now and uh, giving them a good, good play. They're not gonna no, they're not going anywhere. So I'm happy with that. So now it's on to the electrics, um, sorting out the servo and the ESC. So that's everything in. Uh, got the ESC and the servo both plugged into the receiver. Uh, got the on off switch on the top deck. The lead for that's pretty short, um, but I've seen a few people put the on off switch on the top deck, so I've sort of followed suit with that. Uh, the capacitor for the ESC I've put behind the servo. I hope that's going to be all right. I'm not too sure. Um, the only thing I haven't plugged in yet is the fan. So I'll probably leave that unplugged for a little while. Um, right, so I think now we're ready to uh, plug in the battery and reset the servo. And what I'm going to do is go through the electrics a bit more in next week's video. The plan was to do it today. I was going to um, uh, buy the radio gear and calibrate the ESC today. Um, but time's getting on, so um, I'll do a separate video for that, I think. Right, so now we can go back and fit the servo horn and the steering turnbuckle. Uh, the servo horn was a really, really tight fit. Um, we all struggled to get on, but got there in the end. Uh, so now it's on to the motor and fitting the pinion and meshing the gears. So first off, what I'm gonna do is just align the spur gear with the pinion gear and then put a bit of thread lock on the grub screw and secure that to the motor and then mesh the gears. So I've aligned the pinion gear with the spur gear, tighten that down and mesh the gears as close as I can get them. So there still is a little bit of play there, which is what you're supposed to have, like a, a rocking motion. So I'll go ahead and leave that for now. I can always come back and do a um, a little bit of a touch up. Uh, right, so now it's the last bag in the kit. So the final part, and that is fitting the LiPo mount. Uh, so what we do, as we've done the way through the build series, we'll just take a little look at what you do get inside the bag. Last bag in the kit, and it's probably the least interesting. All you get is the front and rear LiPo mounts and the screws for the job. So that's the front and rear LiPo mounts fitted. Uh, they were quite tricky to do, especially the uh, the little bits at the back here. Uh, that one by the pinion and spur was quite tricky to get to. And that one wasn't too bad, but um, you could actually put those on the chassis at the start. No, they're not gonna get in the way of anything. Um, so there's a couple more bits in the instruction manual uh, regarding the LiPo. Uh, it's the tape that you use to strap it down to the chassis. Uh, it just tells you how to do two options. Option one is taping the battery lengthways, and option two is just the same but widthways. So I've left that out. Um, I won't be taping the battery down for quite a while, but I just thought I'd mention it as, as they're in the instruction manual. So I think we are done. That's all the chassis parts in. 
and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Um, really is looking good. Just can't wait to get on the track now. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Um, I had no idea this video was going to go on this long. Um, I could have done a build series and split it into seven or eight parts, but I wanted to get it all done. Next week, going to be looking at the electrics. Um, so we get it powered up. Um, we'll look at the binding, the radio gear, calibrating the ESC. Um, and have a look at the MTS a bit more, go into some of the settings and uh, have a little play about with it. I still think there's uh, one or two tweaks need to be done to the car, but overall the build's finished. So, once again, thanks again for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you next time on RC Newbie to Track.